So there you have it, a biology lesson, a physics lesson, history lesson, all of these things packed into one hour. Um, so we probably have a lot more questions that we can handle, but I, what I'd like to point out is that we have a session coming up at 2.30 called Conversations, where it's going to be back in this room, and we're going to have all the folks here um, there so we can actually spend an hour with them going through all the um, insights and questions you might have. But we do have just a few minutes right now to take any questions that, that you, you might um, have in mind that we can take. Hi, I'm Alan Sandstead from Berkeley Lab. I first want to say that you all are really impressive and inspiring. Um, kudos to you for your vision, your, your drive, and uh, the contributions you're making. So I would like to pose a hypothetical. Suppose you can, any of you might want to take a shot at this. Suppose that your research succeeds beyond your wildest dreams. Not only you get the science done, but then whatever the technological, the technology or the technology, technological application done, and it's built. And not only have you built a prototype, but you've built, you can build these the things, whatever they are, at what you call, what you consider a commercial price point. So it's all happening on that end. Now what happens? Anybody want to take a first shot of what happens if you guys are actually successful at commercializing? <laughs> yeah. Okay, I'll start. Uh, so we highlighted in that talk uh, three things that are just not really possible to do right now with uh, existing technologies. And uh, we think that those will be our niches, basically things that are below about the one kilowatt or even 10 kilowatts where your generator is just really bad. But then as we start to move up, if we're successful, our price point that we've been able to do uh, price out through some technical economic modeling implies that basically, if we're successful, you won't buy a Honda generator anymore. You'll be buying a kilowatt spark reactor, and then a 10 kilowatt spark reactor, and then all the way up to match the needs of not just individuals, but microgrids, and so on and so forth. So we really believe that what we're doing will just be the way that uh, when you need on-demand power in a very lightweight package, you'll look to us. I think the price of lawn clippings will go up. <laughs> yeah, people will be raking their lawn and not just leaving it to methane. They'll be collecting it so that they can turn it into something like, you know, candy flavored antibiotic for their kid's strep throat. I would say we would have a lot less headaches at the workplace. Um, for me, that's like the first start is understanding um, what sort of health implications there actually are and what we can do at a very small scale so that when we do become a larger scale sort of corporation, we know exactly what impact we're going to have on ourselves, and then we can start creating an environment that is healthy for not just us, but other, other animals as well. I think to start, we have a, a, a 10x reduction in the carbon intensity of building heating and cooling, which is like a behind the scenes, but like important goal if we want the next 6 billion people to have thermal comfort. But then after that, the next thing I'm excited about is nobody really likes their air conditioner like, no one's really that happy with how thermally comfortable they are in a building. They're just suffering less. Uh, and so I want to think about how we can design systems that actually, like, make people more comfortable and happy. <laughs> so I'd say if uh, we were successful making tandem solar panels, then uh, the first thing to do, of course, is to upgrade all of the existing capacity from how it exists today to tandem technology. But uh, ultimately, to reach the future that we want to reach, then the next question is figuring out how to get the entire industry to the terawatt scale rather than hundreds of gigawatts. And so that, that means massive increases in manufacturing capacity. And it's not clear exactly how we do that in a cheap and efficient manner. So I think um, if we're successful, you know, we'll no longer have to think and worry about how we're going to get from point A to point B. I think we'll actually reach uh, mass market electric vehicles and renewable energy and not have to worry about anything bad happening. Um, you know, I think that's the future that I see. So I think uh, just just in the interest of time and getting into lunch, what I what I do is I'll take this conversation offline with the folks if possible. 
Um, but if you can, just just uh, take take a moment just to thank them again for for their time and their vision and for joining us here today. And I just want to point out again um, uh, my gratitude to Matt Price from from Cyclotron Road for actually uh, making the introduction and and for having the folks here. Um, and I think you'd all agree that that irrespective of where you live in the world, I think we have a a bright future ahead of us in terms of some of the technologies that are emerging to solve some of the macro problems around the future of energy. Um, hope you enjoy the rest of your day. And, and again, please feel free to come up to, to speak with our speakers. Thank you.